Namaskar. I am grateful to all of you who have joined today to remember the 94th anniversary of the Bardoli Satyagraha, which was the most illuminating and pivotal non-violent protest movement led by Sardar Vallabhai Patel in 1928 that garnered widespread support and gathered considerable recognition. The Satyagraha turned into an influence on many movements in India. I thank the Indian Mission and the Indian Council for Cultural Relations for hosting this talk during the commemoration of the 75th anniversary of India's independence. Sardar Vallabhbhai Patel was an incredible leader with exemplary traits. He was straightforward, declared his mind, and his commitment to India's freedom struggle was true and strongly defined. Sardar Patel had extraordinary traits of courage, integrity, determination, and a strong sense of humor. He played a significant role in the Indian independence movement and in free India. He became the first Deputy Prime Minister and the Home Minister of Sovereign India and worked relentlessly for the preservation of law and order, ensuring stability and integrity of the country. Sardar Vallabhai Patel was born on October 31st, 1876 in Nadia district in Gujarat in India in a Patidar family who were land owners. Patidars were known for rallying closely against outsiders respect for their seniors, an individual reverence to the extended family, and a sense of equality, but were independent before the world. Sardar Patel instinctively acquired all these traits. From an early age, Sardar Patel exhibited the leadership traits of being responsible, forthright, courageous, unsparing, attracted to justice, skillful in debate, aware of his adversary's weak points, and was an eloquent speaker. Sardar Patel was self-taught and when he grew older, he drew up an earnest secret plan for joining the ranks of barristers. To attain this goal, he initially became a lawyer by learning by himself and saved money for his ambition. Sardar Patel could only go to London in August 1910 and finished his course in 30 months to become a barrister. He came back to India in February 1913 and launched his practice as a barrister in Ahmedabad district in Gujarat. He achieved a fame as a revered barrister and was an acknowledged success and his fees reaching to where they became the highest in Ahmedabad. As soon as he came in contact with Mahatma Gandhi in 1917, Sardar Patel disposed of his foreign attire and observed the rules of Satyagraha as set down by Mahatma Gandhi. Sardar Patel was a team builder, took enormous interest in the welfare of his team members and associates by continually inquiring about their needs and problems. He extended all the support. By the summer time of 1917, he was elected as a member of the Ahmedabad City Board and further became the chairman of its sanitary committee. The plague had broken out in Ahmedabad. Schools and courts were closed and many left the city, but Sardar Patel stuck to his residence and refused to move out for personal safety. He was a familiar personality operating in the streets, getting the gutters cleaned and the plague afflicted localities disinfected. At the end of 1917, famine affected neighboring villages. The Gujarat Sabha, of which Mahatma Gandhi was the president and Sardar Patel the secretary, coordinated relief work in which Sardar Patel played a major role. In 1928, Sardar Patel faced an appeal on his person and determination that he had never envisaged, all because of the call from some peasants of Kheda district in Gujarat Strait. Particularly high and unreasonable demand for land revenue by the British government had oppressed them. The peasants were longing for the suspension of the land revenue. Kheda Satyagraha was the first non-cooperation civil disobedience led by Mahatma Gandhi, in which Sardar Patel played a major role. Sardar Patel was thoroughly dedicated to the Kheda Satyagraha and traveled extensively in all the villages in the district. He minutely observed to the hardships of the peasants, motivated them with moral courage and prepared them not to pay land revenue. The Kheda Satyagraha was exceptional for the unified protest and restraint of the peasants. Even when all their belongings, land and subsistence were confiscated, a massive majority of Kheda farmers remained firmly unified in the support of Sardar Patel. The result was that the demand for the land revenue for the current year and the next year were halted and all impounded property was returned. 
Mahatma Gandhi said, speaking about Sardar, after the triumph of the Kheda Satyagraha in 1918, and I quote, a leader's skill is judged by his competence in selecting his assistants. Many were prepared to follow me, but I could not make up my mind as to who should be my deputy commander. Then I thought of Vallabhai. I must admit that when I first met Vallabhai, I could not help wondering who this haughty person was and whether he could be able to do what I wanted. If it were not for his assistance, this Satyagraha could not have been carried through so successfully. In 1922, Mahatma Gandhi was arrested and charged with sedition for writing essays against the British government. Sardar Patel abruptly found himself alone and took a resolve to take charge of the civil disobedience campaign in Gujarat. Later, in 1923, he headed the successful Satyagraha in Borsa district in Gujarat against the retaliatory tax imposed on the villagers by the local administration to pay for additional police forces to protect against dacoits in that area. Mahatma Gandhi's first article after his release from imprisonment and recuperation was about Sardar Vallabhai Patel's leadership. Gandhiji paid a compliment to Vallabhai's outstanding organizing and administrative skill and noted that Patel had collected around himself a band of devoted workers of like mind and ability. Sardar Patel's most famous intervention occurred between 1925 and 1928, attending to a similar tax agitation in the drought-afflicted district of Bardoli in Gujarat. His capabilities as an organizer, speaker, relentless campaigner, and inspirer of ordinary men and women were previously known, which came to the fore in the Bardoli Satyagraha. In 1926, Government had carried out a land survey in the district and they passed a new assessment for the land revenue. The overall increase in the land assessment amounted to 30%. Therefore, the villagers had to bear the burden of a two-fold increment, one on account of the increase assessment and the other because of the higher assessment of the upper class. Sardar Patel and his associates meticulously examined the matter and were satisfied that the peasants' cause of not paying the enhanced land revenue was just. As soon as Gandhiji grasped that Vallabhai Patel had made up his mind, he said, and I quote, Well then, there is nothing more to be considered. Go forward and victory to Gujarat, unquote. With these words began a partnership. Vallabhai Patel was the leader and Mahatma Gandhi his advisor. Sardar Patel's leadership blended the foresight of a peasant, his exceptional determination, forthright diplomacy, and the expertise of a master tactician came to the fore. He united villages and towns, brought about monetary and moral support from all over Gujarat for the farmers' agitation. The Satyagraha remained thoroughly non-violent despite the forced confiscation of land by the British government. The Bardoli Satyagraha was an admirable lesson in the method of voluntary self-suffering to oppose the brute force of the government and brought people closer to Swaraj as it accomplished people's participation on an unprecedented scale for the first time. Sardar Patel was the leader who was adored by people and even those who hated him would recognize the fact that he was a born leader. Some characteristics of Sardar Patel's leadership that one saw in Bardoli were his steadfastness and determination towards the objective he had determined to reach. He had the ability of strong decision making, which one could see in all his actions during the Satyagraha. Sardar Patel was always known for his influencing ability and team building. By 1928, he emerged as one of the most significant leaders in Gujarat, who was second only to Mahatma Gandhi. Sardar Patel marched the path that his mind showed with clarity and did so passionately with intelligence and integrity. Sardar Patel also often engaged in diplomacy to keep the conversation on and never close the doors of debate. Mahatma Gandhi was the greater mentor of, to Sardar Patel and received daily reports and gave his advice when required but confined himself to writing in the Navjeevan and Young India papers about the struggle as it unfolded and the whole nation got to learn about the Satyagraha. The Satyagraha in Bardoli transformed the mood of despondence in the country and it gave the Indians fresh determination. 
It gave the peasants new confidence. The soldiers of the Satyagraha were about 80,000 villagers of Bardoli district. Their leader was Sardar Patel. Vallabhai Patel was given the name of Sardar or the chief by a village woman called Meethi Ben during the struggle and the whole nation accepted this title from then on. The citizens of Bardoli to this day recall the inspiring effect of the Sardar's addresses which he delivered in a dialect and style that was dear to the peasant's heart. Sardar Patel and his team managed the mobilization in Bardoli Satyagraha through comprehensive publicity via meetings, speeches, pamphlets and door-to-door -door persuasion. They placed special significance on the mobilization of women. Students were another main target and they were suggested to persuade their families to continue being firm. Sardar Patel and his assistants also made relentless efforts to see that they brought constitutionalist and moderate leadership with them on all significant issues. He continuously corresponded with the concerned officials of the British government. Sardar Patel traveled around the district tirelessly and explained to people in his inimitable style the doctrine of Satyagraha. Thus he gave them courage for the Satyagraha and told them to be firm, speaking and I quote, having now gone into the water, you must learn to swim. He reminded the people that the struggle was also a test of Mahatma Gandhi's conviction in Satyagraha. He said, and I quote, the world is talking about us. Just as the name of Lord Rama sanctifies even the stones, we have come to be associated with the name of a great man. It is our test, unquote. He would repeatedly allude to Mahatma Gandhi and thus communicated the steadfastness of the Satyagrahi. Sardar Patel utilized the ingenious energies of people for the Bardoli movement. The Satyagraha drew courage from the traditional connections that connected the village communities, the methods of contemporary political protest, and gained significant victory. When the government started impounding land, Sardar Patel explained to the farmers not to be upset as the government could not take the land with them to England. The impounded goods could be sold only if the government could find buyers for them. Thus, the harmony among the local people was vital for the success of the campaign. The government officers tried various tactics to sabotage the unity, but they failed. Public opinion in India was turning more and more restless and against the British government. Peasants in many parts of the Bombay presidency were threatening to agitate for a review of the revenue assessment in their territories. I will not move from Bardoli till we succeeded in the Satyagraha. Sardar Patel had declared in June and a small house was built in the Swaraj Ashram compound in Bardoli for him. The determination to tie his future to Bardoli was a timely boost to the peasant spirit. On June 12th, Sardar Patel and his associates decided to organize a fundraising for the Bardoli Satyagraha across the nation. Monetary and material aid from all over the country started reaching the people of Bardoli. Since then, June 12th has been celebrated as Bardoli Day. With the progress of the Satyagra, the fear from the minds of people vanished. Especially admirable was the role of women. An elderly couple lived in a village called Sarbon. The government felt that the best way to intimidate this couple was to put their residence under siege. They placed armed police officers in front of their residence, while the dreaded Pathans guarded the back door. The residence was under siege since 2.30 a.m. When Sardar Patel along with Mahadev Desai visited their home, the old man's wife was sitting at a window on the first story of the house, rosary in hand, and was repeating Lord Rama's name. I hope, old mother, you are not afraid, asked Sardar Patel from outside her home. Why should I be afraid when you are there to protect us? Not I, but Lord Rama, said the Sardar correcting. Indeed, Lord Ramji is merciful, she said, nodding in assent. But how do you like these policemen at your door? They are quite welcome. But for them, the Sardar would not have graced my house, she said. Long live the Sardar to fight many a good fight, said Mahatma Gandhi, adopting the peasant's appellation in a letter. After four exhausting months of extraordinary hardship, borne stoically by the villagers, the legislative council members from Surat wrote to the governor and provided the face-saving device, assuring him that his precondition for an inquiry would be satisfied. They removed the hurdles to a settlement on August 6th, 
1928, following long deliberation in Pune between Sardar Patel and Sir Chunnilal Mehta, finance member of the Bombay government, who negotiated on behalf of the governor. The government cancelled its previous threats and agreed that the sold lands would be acquired back and returned to the peasants. The agreement was carried out with the dispatch. Prisoners were at once let off. The village headsmen were reinstated and they issued orders to restore forfeited lands. In a separate reprisal, Leslie Wilson, the governor, admitted that the government has no effective weapon for dealing with Satyagraha. Vallabhai Patel of April 1928 had become the Sardar in June and the victorious general in August 1928. His soldiers, the peasants, had not given in. They had not hit back and the government had yielded. In four months of hard battle, not a single life had been lost. Sarojini Naidu, the distinguished Indian political activist and poet, noted that Sardar Patel had manifested an amazing power of organization twice within one year and translated Mahatma Gandhi's teachings into practical dynamic action. Mahatma Gandhi's dream was to make Bardoli the perfect example of Satyagraha. Bardoli has fulfilled itself in its own fashion, interpreting and perfecting Gandhiji's dream by Sardar Patel. The outcome of the Satyagraha in Bardoli contributed to the advancement of Satyagraha philosophy and established it as a practice. The Satyagraha had started with a limited scope and a specific demand, but the struggle had nationwide ramifications and was successful in establishing the mood for complete independence. Mahadev Desai, the associate of Sardar Patel, wrote the story of Bardoli Satyagraha. And I quote from it, He is ever on the move, without haste and without rest, his iron discipline ever so unrelaxed, paying the penalty of exclusive prerogative, speech making, often at midnight and often at three or four places in a day." Unquote. Nobel laureate Rabindranath Tagore wrote after reading the story of Bardoli Satyagraha and I quote, I have finished your story of Bardoli. It has the spirit of the epic age in the narrative of the triumph of moral right over arbitrary power through a fight, moral in character, unique in modern times. I thank you and the leader of the fight and the fighters, also your great guide, my blessings." Unquote. The Bardoli Satyagraha was a turning point in the Indian independence struggle and Netaji Subhash Chandra Bose, who was the most prominent leader of the Indian freedom struggle, prejudged that it was a precursor to a larger battle that Mahatma Gandhi would wage. The British government looked at Sardar Patel as a threat. They considered his lectures as being against the government. They imprisoned him several times. In 1942, he took part in the Quit India movement under the leadership of Mahatma Gandhi. Sardar Patel also had great conflict resolution skills and the ability to adapt to any kind of situation. He was also known for his never-ending spirit, dedication to work, loyalty to the country, always adapting to the group and maintaining balance. In the post-independent India, Sardar Patel emerged as an astute leader and an insightful statesman, acknowledged as the Iron Man and a founder of modern India. As a nation builder, Sardar Patel's unrelenting efforts towards the unity of the country brought success. To honor him, the 182 meter tall colossal statue of Sardar Vallabhai Patel, built as the world's tallest, was built near the Sardar Sarovar Dam in Kevadia town in Gujarat, which was inaugurated by the Prime Minister on October 31st, 2018. We celebrate National Unity Day in India on 31st October to mark the birth anniversary of Sardar Patel. His life is an inspiration for everyone and the nation remembers his tremendous selfless contribution gratefully during the celebration of India's 75th year of independence. I once again take this opportunity to thank the Indian Mission and the Indian Council for Cultural Relations for hosting the talk. My special thanks are to all of you who have joined me online. Namaskar.